I, Carrie Chapman Catt, am proud to be considered one of the most zealous and successful American leaders for women's suffrage. I grew up in the Midwest and I paid my own way through college because my father wouldn't pay for college for a woman. During my education at Iowa State, I joined the Crescent Literacy Society, a student organization aimed at improving learning skills and self-confidence. Only men were allowed to speak at meetings, but I defied the rules and I spoke up during male debates. This led to a discussion and ultimately to women gaining the right to speak. In 1880, I'm proud to say, I was the only female graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree. A few years later, I married Leo Chapman, a newspaper editor, and we moved to California. Leo died of typhoid fever 18 months later. So returning to Iowa, I married George Catt, a wealthy engineer. Both of my husbands encouraged my participation in women's suffrage. I must admit that their money and encouragement made it possible for me to spend a good part of each year on the road campaigning for women's suffrage. I began, began working for the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Susan B. Anthony asked me to address Congress on the proposed amendment. I succeeded Anthony as president of NASA. During my time there, I supervised dozens of campaigns, mobilized numerous volunteers, and made hundreds and hundreds of speeches. In 1920, I founded the League of Women Voters and the International Alliance of Women, which included 32 nations. I received an award at the White House from my longtime friend, Eleanor Roosevelt, and I was pictured on the cover of Time magazine. And I also made it onto a postage stamp in 1948. My leadership was considered progressive, but not radical. Before the amendment, women could not vote. And this was for reasons which were so unconvincing that it's hard to believe they were ever taken seriously. Prior to the amendment, people generally believed that a woman didn't have enough judgment to choose political candidates. They argued that a woman's reason was not equal to a man's. Many people presented the argument that an argument against women's suffrage was an argument against democracy. We will fight for women's suffrage, the right to vote. I say to you all, to the wrongs that need resistance, to the rights that need assistance, to the future in the distance, give yourselves.